Time to try making another mouse trap car. Uh, saw one on YouTube a couple of nights ago, and I thought I might have a go at it because it seemed a nice, simple little compact car. No idea how far it goes, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, quick summary. I'm going to use my cordless drill, my trusty hot glue gun, uh, my little hobby saw, pair of cutters, a crosshead screwdriver, a few um, drill bits. That's hopefully all the tools I need. Then a little bit of fishing line, a couple of ball pens, mouse trap, uh, four, I'm not quite sure what you call them, screw eyes. These um, these screws I actually got out of an old uh, kitchen cupboard closing mechanism or hinge. Uh, they just seem to be just the right size for what I've got in mind. You'll see why later. So I've got four of them. I've got eight washers that just happen to be the right size for those screws. A um, cocktail stick. And I've got four 45 records, or singles. Um, I just thought I'd use them, because when I make cars using CDs as wheels, I occasionally get a question, what can I use instead of a CD? So I saw these in a charity shop for, I think it was 5 for 50p, so I thought I'd give them a try. First thing I'm going to do is mark up the mouse trap for drilling some holes because what I'm going to do is put two of these at each end and they will actually be the supports for the axles. Now at the moment these are a bit of a stiff fit in, on the outside of my axles. I'm going to rub this down with a bit of sandpaper in a minute make it a bit smoother. And they're going to go on there. But I'm going to drill some holes in the end to mount them. Now I'm a bit worried because these are this mouse trap's very thin wood. It's a fairly lightweight job. And I think that if I just drill holes and screw into it, there's a good chance they'll split. So I think what I might do is I might drill the holes but make them oversize holes and actually put a little drop of hot glue in there and then just push them in so that I'm not actually stressing the wood as I do it. So I shall mark that up and then drill the holes. Right, I've drilled the holes. Just waiting for my hot glue gun to warm up. So these are a loose fit at the moment. So I'll just pop a little bit of hot glue in each hole and then push them in. It'll also help me make sure I've got it all nice and level and parallel. Right, that's then pushed in place and put a little bit of extra hot glue on them anyway just to help hold them in place. This wood is very thin, I can see it's actually split a little bit where I've drilled it anyway so um, very lightweight mouse trap. I think mice got caught in that, they'd just pick it up and run away with it. Right Next stage, I'm going to rub these plastic tubes down a bit so they're actually a free run inside. Right, a few minutes uh, with a bit of sandpaper. I'll basically rub the ridges off the outside. And they're nice, nice and smooth in there now, free running. In fact, when it's been used for a little bit, I've no doubt that will rub itself even uh, even smoother. 
Right, so that's the basics. I won't throw away the pen tops because I'll probably cut them up and use them as spacers to hold the wheels in place so they don't slide backwards and forwards. Next decision to make is we're going to have to have the wheels overlapping. So do we want the back ones on the inside or the front ones on the inside? My preference is I'm going to put the back ones on the inside and the front ones on the outside. So which is the front and which is the back? Well, if you think about it, you're going to tie a bit of string or fishing line in my case onto there and it's going to go round the back axle and as it flies up there that's going to turn the back axle so this is the back and that's the front so I need my back axle to be just wider than that to make sure that the wheels don't actually rub on the sides in fact that little bit sticks out a tiny bit so I need it to be probably quarter of an inch clear on either side so if I just mark that up about there somewhere and also I'm going to put cut the pen top up into just little black uh, little um, discs just to space that out a bit so Need to saw that. In an ideal world, you'd actually use a cut a vertical saw to cut that absolutely straight. It doesn't look too bad. Now these screws that I found, they just happen to be a, a very tight fit in there, in fact they actually cut their own threads. So I'm going to use them to hold the, um, I was going to say CDs, I'm so used to CDs, hold the records on the outside. Remember this plastic's not very strong and in fact that one's got a tiny little split on it already. So it might even be a case of a bit of hot glue again. But I'll for the time being I'll just screw them in place. So washer record another washer on the inside. There we are. That's going to go on there. As I say, I need to put a couple of little spaces in there to make sure it doesn't fly around too much and do the same on the other side. We also need to drill a little hole in the middle there to put a little peg on to hold the fishing line. Right, there we are. I've screwed them in place, put some hot glue into the tubes first. Um, as I spin that round you can see I haven't got them straight but that's going to be alright for now. Um, I cut the pen tops as I said and using them as spacers so it clears the bodywork. I've drilled a tiny little hole in there in the middle which I'm going to put my cocktail stick in and that'll do us the anchor for the fishing line when it's attached to the bar. Okay, I'll put a bit of hot glue on that just to hold it in place and then cut it to length. Right, I've just added the front axle as well. Exactly the same process. Um, I've used the pen tops cut up to give spacers. Squirted a bit of hot glue inside the um, axles and put the screws through. They're not perfect. As you can see as we're going along, got a bit of a could wobble on this side. I could take them out and try and straighten them up a bit but I'm not going to at the moment. What I'm going to do now is um, oh, just see I haven't trimmed that feather off yet. 
need to trim that. It doesn't need to be very long at all, it's just so the fishing line can hook onto something. And obviously that's got to spin freely. And that's for its spin. Oh, that one's awful, isn't it? Look at that. Never mind. I'm sure it will still uh, run. So we need to put a bit of fishing line on, tie it onto there, put a loop on it so I can loop it around there. Just tying the uh, fishing line on here. Just going to say, obviously, the length needs to be able to get to the back there. So that's the length of my loop. This car is not designed to go 200 meters or anything like that. This is going to be a short, um, short burst of power. So um, let's see. If I made that a bit short. It's a little bit short. All right, I'll make that a bit longer, but I won't video it while I'm doing it. First test run. Okay, we're all uh, set up there. The fishing lines wrapped around the back axle. So the mouse trap's ready to be sprung. And we'll see how far we go. Well, that would have been better if it went in a straight line. Let's try again. Right. Test run number two. I found the easiest way to wind up the fishing line was to set the trap first. So if I just push that over there, put the locking bar across. There we are, so that's locked in place. Now wind up the fishing line. tension on it as I wind it up. Oh, got my finger caught in there, that doesn't help. There we are, that's all wound up. Alright, we'll give it one more chance to redeem itself. Make sure we're pointing off to the left a bit because it's turning to the right. Let's see how we go. Oh, just short of my target. You can see that the wheels really aren't going very straight. But that'll have to do. So there we go, mouse trap, 45 or singles records, um, ball pen tubes as axles, screw eyes uh, to actually hold the support the axles, bit of fishing line to connect it all up together, screws screwing into those plastic axles didn't work very well in fact if you look carefully I've had to put a bit of extra hot glue in there to hold them on basically the screws were coming loose um, yeah a little bit disappointed I wanted to get about another six inches and then I've been happy it's doing that is actually five meters it's traveling um, but I'd have liked a little bit more probably go a little bit better as it wears itself in because at the moment it's not completely free running if you remember I had to sand the um, tubes down a little bit so they actually fitted inside properly so um, I'm not going to do any more on that it works um, not quite as nicely as I thought that mouse trap I think is uh, about as cheap as you can get as, as you remember I said it's very thin wood on it so I had to take care when I was drilling the holes um, it works, it could be better 
how straight does it go with nothing connected? Well, it actually goes straight without power, so um, yeah. Well, there we go anyway. <laughs>